Hola a todos y muy buenas tardes. Pues buenas tardes desde Escocia. Hoy estamos en Escocia y estamos haciendo este, este programa, esta lección, para ayudaros con vuestro español. Pues estoy muy contento de estar aquí con vosotros hoy. My name is Mark. Mi nombre es Mark y yo soy el profesor de Coffee Break Spanish, uno de los profesores, claro. Y pues hoy vamos a hablar un poco de la gramática. We're going to talk a little about grammar today because this is a special class in which we are focusing on a particular aspect of Spanish grammar and that is the imperfect tense. We're going to be talking about the imperfect and how you use it, how you form it, and uh, most importantly, how it changes and differs from other uh, tenses in the past in Spanish. Now, this is a live class, so let us know where you're watching, how long you've been learning for. Uh, let me just make sure that uh, the notifications are off on my computer so that we're not going to get disturbed. Uh, think we're good to go. So just to double check that the slides are working, we've got slides here. Yes, that's good. I'll tell you a little bit more about Argentina and Chile last year. Um, but to, to make sure that everything is working and also I'd love to know where you're watching from and uh, indeed how long you've been learning Spanish for. I can put these comments hopefully on the screen. We should be broadcasting on both uh, YouTube and on Facebook tonight. So let me know where you're watching. We've got Brian Moffat in Florida in the United States and uh, Brian's been learning for almost seven years. Muy bien, pues muchas gracias. We've got Anne joining us in Australia, a very early start indeed on Australia. You're, you're very welcome, Anne. Glad you're able to join us tonight, or indeed this morning. <laughs> It's already Thursday morning for you. Um, Sandra is joining us from Aberdeen in Scotland, just a little bit north from here. Um, so you have been learning for four years. Brilliant, Sandra. You're very welcome too. We've got Marcel joining us from Amsterdam. And uh, you've been joining us. Oh, I like your, your microphone set up there, Marcel. That looks very good. Uh, so you've been learning Spanish for two years. Um, and Ron is imperfectamente en San Francisco. Pues muy bien. Muchas gracias, Ron. Um, Olive is uh, in Ireland and has been studying for two years. Heather has been learning for three years in Oxfordshire. Um, Keith joining us from near Liverpool. Tim in Tampa. Um, Susan's in Virginia learning for 18 months. Fantastic to know that there are lots of you joining tonight. Now, if you do have any questions at any point, then make sure you post them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer your questions as we go along or indeed looking at them uh, a little later on, um, especially if the, the questions concern our masterclass. Because this is a course, this is a, a lesson uh, tonight that we're going to be looking for or that we, or we're going to be looking at, and it's coming from the content of our masterclass course. And the important thing is to mention that our masterclass course, a special course that lasts for six months, and it's going to be starting on Friday. So in two days time on the 1st of July, And it's a course that lasts from, from July all the way through to December. And I'll tell you a little more about that a bit later on. But if this kind of content that you're going to be working on uh, in this lesson is useful to you, then I would definitely suggest that you consider the masterclass. Let's have a quick look at some of the rest of the comments. We've got Cindy joining us in North Kai. Um, Bert from Holland, living about a year and a half with Duolingo. I've been living under a rock because I just found out about Coffee Break Spanish. Yeah, we've been around for some time, Bert, but you're very welcome no matter when you start. Ashley is joining us from England. Uh, well, you're originally from England, but you're living in Ottawa in Canada and you've been learning for three years. Fantastic. Fantastic. We've got Bev in Cheltenham, lovely part of the world. Um, we've got Charles joining us from Texas. Keith has been studying the, the, the language for many years. Ronnie's in Israel, uh, learning for two years. Um, and it's joining us from just up the road in Glasgow. Um, and there we have it. Fantastic. Great to have you all here. Oh, we've got Nina joining us in Finland and Michelle in Vancouver studying for five months. Okay, we're going to make a start with our class. So let's bring in the slides. And I want you to think about some sentences here as we go through this. I'm going to be asking you some, some questions. I'm going to I'd be asking you if you're understanding what we're, what we're talking about. But we're going to be focusing on the imperfect tense. And I'd like to begin from the point of view of English. And let's look at these sentences. So first of all, we went to Argentina and Chile last year. Straightforward enough. Uh, number two, I have traveled to lots of South American countries. Okay. And number three, my father used to live in Buenos Aires. 
So let's look at these three sentences. We've got three different types of past tenses in these sentences. We've got, we went to Argentina. I have traveled and my father used to live. And in Spanish, we would actually have to use a different tense for each of these sentences. So we went to Argentin, Argentina and Chile last year. That's a, a single event in the past. And it is, if you imagine, it's part of a story. We went to Argentina and Chile last year. So that is what we used to call in, in season uh, two of Coffee Break Spanish, a thtum. If you remember that, it was a thtum. And the thtum is something that happens immediately. Don't look that word up. It's something I made up. Spelled T-H-T-O-O-M. Thum, but it's something that happens as part of a story and it's an individual event in a story. So we went to Argentina and Chile last year. So in Spanish, we'd be looking at a preterite tense there. I have travelled to lots of South American countries. Okay, so I have travelled. When we've got a part of the verb to have and what we would call a past participle, in this case, travelled, that's when we're talking about what we call a perfect tense, or in English, a present perfect tense. So in Spanish, we need a perfect tense there. So, he viajado. Uh, the first one would be, fui. Fui a Argentina y a Chile el año pasado. Esta vez, uh, he, he viajado a muchos países latinoamericanos o suramericanos. The final one there, my father used to live in Buenos Aires. We're describing there an ongoing situation, something that happened for some time, but crucially, is no longer the case. So my father used to live in Buenos Aires. We know that that happened for a period of time in the past, and it now no longer is the case. So there we would use an imperfect tense. Hopefully, so far, so good. Let's think about how this imperfect tense is used in Spanish. It's used for repeated actions in the past. Okay, and we're going to be looking at examples of these as we talk about this in further detail. Repeated actions in the past or ongoing actions in the past. Think about my father who used to live. He lived in Buenos Aires and that wasn't just a single narrative event. It was something that was ongoing and also used for incomplete actions in the past. So actions that, that don't necessarily have an end. We also use the imperfect tense for states of being, feelings, weather, etc. But we're going to look at more examples of all of these as we work through the slides. So, first of all, the imperfect tense describes what we used to do. My father used to live in Buenos Aires, something that was done on more than one occasion. So, obviously, living is something that is an ongoing thing, living in Buenos Aires. Or our example here, I used to dance every day as a child. So I used to dance every day as a child. This means that every day on a regular basis, I used to dance. So it describes what we used to do. That's number one use of the imperfect tense. Number two use of the imperfect tense. It describes what was happening and sometimes when something else happened. So something that was happening when something else happened. So uh, we were playing football and a dog ran onto the pitch or we were watching television at the time. So you're talking about what was happening. In this case, we were watching. So we were, I was, you were, and so on. Obviously, the verb conjugates in English, just like we have to conjugate Spanish verbs too. So the imperfect tense there is used for something that was happening, in the sometimes case, in, in the case sometimes, when something else happened. Okay, so that's use number two of our imperfect. Use number three, be careful with this one, it can translate would. However, it's only when referring to a repeated action in the past. And I always think of this as the sort of romantic or the, 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 the dream tense or something like that. So, ah, they would walk along the beach hand in hand. Um, we would head out to dinner every Friday evening. And it's this kind of idea of an, a thing in the past that happened on a regular basis. And in a sense, if we can replace the would with used to, then we know that it's definitely the imperfect. Now, there is another would, and that would is the conditional. So, um, I would buy a house in Spain if I had lots of money, that kind of idea. That's a different would, okay? That's not a would for the imperfect tense. So, you really need to be careful with this would in the imperfect tense because it is something that's very specific. It translates would, but only when it's referring to a repeated action in the past. Hopefully that makes sense. 
And the imperfect tense is normally used to talk about most descriptions in the past. So when you're talking about people or places or clothes or feelings or weather, all of these tend to be described using the imperfect tense. So it was warm, imperfect tense in Spanish, and he wore a t-shirt and shorts. Now this is not an individual action in the past. He wore a t-shirt and shorts and then he wore something else. This is an ongoing description of how he was dressed at a particular time. So it was warm and he wore a t-shirt and shorts. Again, examples of the imperfect, or at least examples in English of what we would use with an imperfect in Spanish. Okay, so that's a kind of summary of where we are with the imperfect tense. And sometimes a key thing that will help is knowing what the triggers are that will help you to remember that imperfect. So in Spanish, we could be looking at things like a veces, sometimes, frecuentemente, frequently, cada día, every day or each day, siempre, always, todos los días, every day or todas las semanas, every week, todos los años, every year, or de vez en cuando, from time to time. All of these are triggers for the imperfect. Okay. What I'd like to know is, so far, so good. Have you understood everything so far? We've always, obviously been focusing, focusing, I'll start again. We've obviously been focusing on English in the sense of how we think of these concepts in English. And then we moved into Spanish there and focused on the ways in which the imperfect in Spanish is used and given you situations which will help you work out when the imperfect is used in Spanish. So I'd like you to post in the comments. If you're very confused, post a one. If some of this makes sense, then post a two. If everything is okay so far, then post a three. That will really help me to know if there's anything that we need to go back through or if what I'm saying doesn't make sense. Hopefully, we're going to get some at least twos and threes in here and I can see them coming in now. That's fantastic. Good to know that things are making sense. Again, if you have any questions about any of this, then don't hesitate to post your questions in the chat and I'll make sure um, that we pick them up. I can normally mark things as I see them coming in. Um, if there's a question, I can mark that and I'll come back to that um, at the appropriate point. So, fantastic. Muchas gracias. Lots of threes. In fact, I think it's all threes so far, which is brilliant. Good. Okay, let's move on. We want to conjugate the imperfect, and I've got some great news for you on this, okay? But we'll come to that in a little moment. Conjugating the imperfect. So when we learn a, ver a verb, we always need to learn all the different parts of that verb. But the great thing about verbs is that very often they follow very typical patterns. And that's exactly what happens with the imperfect. So let's look at regular AR verbs. And the endings of this are ava, avas, ava, Abamos, abais, aban. Now, as you may know, I love the music of Abba, so I love this tense in particular. But let's take an example and we'll take the verb cantar. Let's say we're all singing some Abba songs. So to say I was singing or I used to sing or I would sing every Friday evening in a band or something like that, cantaba. So cantaba, cantabas, cantaba, cantábamos, cantabais, cantaban. Now, just to make sure we're all following this, if you're not used to conjugating verbs, we're talking about the I form, the you form, the he or she or the singular or it form, then we form, the you plural form, and the they uh, plural form, okay? So, cantaba, cantabas, cantaba, cantábamos, cantabais, cantaban. Okay, I've not got much room here to do my hand signals, but I always do hand signals when we're doing verbs. So, that's AR verbs in the imperfect Let's move on to ER verbs, and this is where the first piece of good news comes, because it's not only ER verbs, it's ER and IR verbs. They use the same endings in the imperfect. That's what makes the imperfect such a perfect tense. See what I did there? Okay, so let's look at, uh, I don't know, we'll look at vender, the verb to sell, vender. So I would say, vendía, I was selling, or I used to sell. Vendías, you used to sell. Vendía. Okay, he, she, it, they used to sell. Bendíamos, we all used to sell. Bendíais, you all used to sell. And bendían, they used to sell. Now also the ia form and the ian form, so the third person singular and the third person plural form can also of course be used for the usted form. So usted bendía, you, polite, formal, were selling. And ustedes, you, plural, 
and it's polite in Spain and it's just the normal tense that would be the normal person that would be used in uh, most of, of Latin America. Vendían, ustedes vendían, you were selling, plural form. Okay, so that's ER and IR verbs. We'll take an IR verb, abrir, to open. So I would say abría, abrías, abría, abríamos, abríais, abrían. Let's do this together. You're going to say this out aloud. I can't hear you, obviously, but I, I will know that you're saying this along with me if you if you do this. And if you are doing it, let, let me know in the comments. Give, give me a why for saying that you read this out loud. That makes me feel better if you're all reading this aloud with me. So, vendía, vendías, vendía, vendíamos, vendíais, vendían. Hopefully that worked. Let's do abrir. Um, and also make sure you're doing the hand signals too, okay? If you're, uh, if you can't use the hand signals at the moment, then, then don't, okay? If it's not, not safe for you to use the hand signals, then don't, okay? So, abría, abría, I, I used to open, abrías, abría, abríamos, abríais, abrían. Okay, I'm loving these Y's coming in for, yes, you're doing this along with me. Thank you for doing this. Um, I appreciate that. Brilliant. Okay, that's regular AR verbs. Regular ER verbs and regular IR verbs. Now, we know that when it comes to irregular verbs in Spanish, it can get a little more complicated because very often the irregular verbs, <laughs> sorry, uh, the irregular verbs um, are, are, are complex and there's loads to learn. And this is the second bit of good news. There are only three irregular verbs in the whole of the Spanish language for the imperfect tense. Great news, great news. Um, just before we go on to them, I'm loving this comment from uh, John uh, saying, my wife is looking strangely on as you're doing these hand signals, but I, I, I'm sure she'll appreciate that, John. Um, fantastic. Okay, so three irregular verbs in the imperfect. Let's look at them. First of all, we've got ir, ir. So ir, it's kind of funny because when you think about ir, it's almost like an ending in itself, but it would be a wee bit strange just to have ia, 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 because those are our endings. So what happens with ir is they, they throw in a b. So you get iba, I was going, ir of course is to go, iba, ibas, iba, ibamos, ibais, iban. So that's the imperfect of ir. Let's look at the other uh, verb here. We've got ser, another very common verb, to be. And ser would be era, eras, era, eramos, erais, eran. So, I was, you were, he was, she was, and so on. We were, you all were, and they were. So, that's ser. And then the other irregular verb in the imperfect is ver. And that, again, kind of, well, it, it would be a little weird just to use the ending er and then take that off and then add our endings. So, we add an extra e in there. So, veía, veías, veía, veíamos, veíais, veían. Now, again... These are irregular, but you'll have seen they're using these patterns that we're already very familiar with. So although they're irregular, they're pretty much regular in their irregularity, if that makes sense. So we've got our three regular conjugations that we've gone through. We've gone through our three irregular verbs. Those are the only irregular verbs in the whole of the Spanish language. Wonderful news. And another question. So far, so good. How is it so far? Are you confused? Has all of this made perfect sense? Um, or are you... Okay, is it, is it a one, two, or a three? Let me know again from the uh, in, in the comments. That would be great. What we're going to do in a moment is listen to a dialogue and this dialogue is going to include some irregular some sorry some imperfect tenses so you're going to be listening to the dialogue and you're going to be trying to recognize the imperfect tenses and the dialogue comes straight from our uh, Coffee Break Spanish Masterclass content. We have a module on uh, verbs. Indeed, it's called Tense Mastery. So we're looking at a whole range of different tenses, including the imperfect, but also the preterite, the perfect, the future, and so on. So great to see some threes coming in there. Excellent stuff. Hopefully all of this makes sense and hopefully the explanations are, are good. Um, so let me just check if I come here. I should be able to put this on the screen. Yep. So we're going to have a listen. And you're going to listen to the conversation without any transcript. So we'll do that first. And then once we've done that, I'll put the transcript on the screen and we'll listen a little more slowly. So let's see how this goes. I'll put this up here and we'll listen to the conversation for the first time. Tengo que pedirte un favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? 
tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. Por supuesto. Estupendo, pues vamos a empezar. Primera pregunta, ¿cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? Aproximadamente, claro. Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos, por ejemplo. Pues no le recuerdo exactamente, pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Íbamos más temprano, pero siempre comíamos en casa. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de la casa? Sí, ayudamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla... Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias. ¿De nada? <laughs> okay. So, Rosa finished off the, the, the interview there quite quickly, but we had lots of good examples of our imperfect tenses. Okay, so you were listening to a little segment of some of our audio lessons there from the masterclass, and it probably was quite tricky. I didn't give you any context. You were thrown in at the deep end there, listening to a conversation between Rosa and myself, and she was asking me about the things that I used to do when I was at school, um, comparing things for uh, a, a piece of homework, a, a, a project at, at school. So... What we're going to do now is listen to the same text, but this time a little more slowly. And also I'm going to put the transcript on the screen. So have a listen again. Hopefully this time it will be a little easier to understand. I'm not sure how you found that. Again, maybe you could let me know with a, a one, two or a three on, in terms of how you found that particular text difficulty level when you, uh, you first heard it there. But we're going to listen again. It's going to be a little bit slower and you'll have the transcript on the screen. Now, I should say, when you're working through the masterclass, obviously you've got all the transcripts of all of the, the dialogues to uh, work through. And also you've got the, uh, the, the audio that you'll hear at different speeds. So both at normal speaking speed, like you've just heard, and at a slower speed. So let's listen again. Um, interesting to see that we've got some ones and twos. So obviously the, lay of the, the speed of that was quite challenging. Let's listen again and I will put the transcript on the screen. Here goes. Tengo que pedirte un favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día y cómo vivían hace años. Por supuesto. Estupendo. Pues vamos a empezar. Primera pregunta. ¿Cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? Aproximadamente, claro. ¿Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos? Pues no lo recuerdo exactamente, pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Íbamos más tempranos, pero siempre comíamos en casa. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? En mi tiempo libre solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de casa? Sí, ayudábamos todos. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas, pero hacíamos cosas como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla... Pues esto es todo. Muchas gracias, Mar. Okay. How was it that time? Did it make more sense when you were able to follow the text and listen in? You would be seeing quite a number of imperfects in there, and we're just going to go through the whole text so that you know exactly what was happening. And again, this is something that we do within the notes of the masterclass. So you'll be able to um, follow the text and then understand everything, and we'll explain all of the context, the context of, of what you're listening to. So let's bring the transcript on the screen again, and I'll talk through this uh, a little Uh, to help you understand. So first of all, Rosa is saying, Tengo que pedirte un favor. I need to ask you a favor. ¿Puedo hacerte algunas preguntas para un trabajo de clase? Can I literally make to you some questions for a piece of homework, for, para un trabajo de clase, for a work of class? Tengo que comparar cómo viven los niños hoy en día. I have to compare how live the children today, or how children live today, y cómo vivían hace años, and how they used to live years ago. So that used to live, vivían. There's our imperfect tense from vivir. I say, por supuesto. Rosa continues, estupendo. Fantastic. Pues vamos a empezar. Let's begin. Primera pregunta. 
First question, ¿cuántas horas de clase tenías en el colegio? So another imperfect tense from the verb tener, to have. So how many hours of class did you have at school? Aproximadamente, claro. Approximately, of course. Puedes comparar con el horario de clase de tus hijos, por ejemplo. You can compare with the timetable of your children, of, uh, for example. And I say, pues no lo recuerdo exactamente. I don't remember exactly. Pero yo estaba en el colegio menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. So another imperfect here. Yo estaba, I was, from the verb estar, estaba en el colegio. I was in school. Menos tiempo del que están mis hijos. Less time than my children are. Del que están mis hijos. That's a little bit tricky. Íbamos más temprano. We went from ir, remember our, our, uh, our irregular imperfect there, íbamos. We went más temprano, earlier, pero siempre comíamos en casa. But we always literally had lunch at home, so we were always back by lunchtime. Let's continue on. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? So that's, that, that's from the verb hacer. It ends in er. So we're adding the regular endings. And that's quite a surprise because hacer can very often be an irregular verb. But in the imperfect, it's wonderful because it's exactly regular. ¿Qué hacías en tu tiempo libre? What did you do? What did you used to do in your free time? I say, en mi tiempo libre, solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos y mis vecinos. In my free time, I used to read and play with my brothers and sisters and my neighbors. Now, solía. What a wonderful verb. Solía is a fantastic verb. because It comes from the verb soler. And soler can be paired with an infinitive. And when it's paired with an infinitive, then it means to use to do something. And that's quite tricky to understand on the basis that we've already talked about the imperfect tense on its own can be con conveying that. But when we're talking in the present, suelo hacer, I tend to do something. Or in the past, I tended to do something. So bring this back on. En mi tiempo libre, solía leer y jugar con mis hermanos. So in my free time, I tended to read y jugar con mis hermanos and play with my brothers, brothers and sisters. So Rosa asks another question. ¿Ayudabas con las tareas de casa? Did you used to help? So another ER verb. Con las tareas de casa. With the, the household chores. And I say, sí, ayudábamos todos. We all used to help. So another ER verb there. Ayudábamos the nosotros form. We all used to help. Es cierto que mi madre se encargaba de la mayoría de las tareas domésticas. It's true that my mum uh, took charge of the majority of the um, household chores. Pero hacíamos cosas, but we used to do things. And again, we've got hacíamos from hacer. Como recoger nuestra habitación, poner la mesa, quitarla, like um, clean our, or tidy our bedroom, uh, lay the table, clear the table. And then Rosa finishes off, pues esto es todo, that's everything, muchas gracias, and I say de nada. So there we have our conversation. Now that, as I say, is a conversation taken straight from our module on verbs, mastering verbs, the tense mastery, we call it, in the, in the, the masterclass. And I'm going to tell you a little more about our Coffee Break masterclass now. We've done the listening activity, taking it further with the Coffee Break Masterclass. So the Masterclass is made up of monthly modules over the next six months from uh, July all the way through to December. And of course, it's based around short, regular sessions. It's Coffee Break Learning, that's the idea. And that means it's structured learning. So what you learn in one lesson is picked up in the next lesson and in the next lesson. And we build on what you know, helping you develop your knowledge uh, through the course. There's audio content, like what you've heard, text, materials, and video review. So video review at the end of each month to help you cover what you've learned and to consolidate what you've learned and check, indeed, what you've learned. And as I say, this is Coffee Break Learning. So everything that you're used to, if you're listening to Coffee Break podcasts, if you watch our videos, if you're taking part in a live like this, it's all very much relaxed, friendly content that it's kind of like sitting down with a friend who happens to speak the language. So coffee break length, 15 minutes, 20 minutes max. And uh, that way, if you've got that kind of time on a regular basis, you're able to keep up with the masterclass. Coffee break style, friendly, enjoyable. And as I say, like going for a coffee with a friend. 
And of course, coffee break quality. Everything that we do, we try to make really, really excellent quality. Uh, you'll not be seeing any kind of PowerPoints with a little person speaking through a PowerPoint or anything like that. All of the, the content, the video content is professionally produced. All of the audio content is recorded in professional studios and so on. So we really pride ourselves on the quality of our, our content and we hope that you can see that even in what I'm doing tonight. Um, so we're talking coffee break length, style and quality. Let's talk a little about the curriculum of the masterclass. So there are six modules, as I said. The first one in July will be on frases hechas, so idiomatic expressions that you can use to help yourself sound more Spanish. The more authentic kind of expressions you can use, the better you'll sound. Um, and we'll be covering a range of um, idiomatic expressions that can be used both in, in Spain and in other parts of the Spanish-speaking world. In August, we move on to our tricky verbs module. So we'll be focusing on some verbs, some verbs that you'll be very familiar with in a sense, but maybe you're not familiar with more complex uses of these verbs. And also looking at some verbs which have similar meanings in English, and the similar mean, uh, meanings in English kind of confuse things because may, we may have one word in English, I'm thinking of to know, um, but in Spanish you've got to decide is that conocer or saber. And there are some situations where it's cl pretty clear, saber a fact, conocer a person, but what do you use if it is perhaps to know the words of a song? Hmm, interesting question, which will be answered in module two. <laughs> In September, we move on to another vocabulary-based module, and that's false friends. And those are those words where you think you know what they mean because they look like an English word, but in fact, they mean something completely different. So our module in false friends is uh, in September. And then moving on to October, where we're focusing on tenses. And as, as I said, this, this imperfect tense content was taken from that module. So we're also looking at the preterite, the perfect, the conditional, and the future in, in our module on tense mastery. And then the subjunctive, the famous subjunctive. Uh, many learners seem to get very worried about the subjunctive. It's a special kind of verb. Um, don't worry about it if you've not come across this before, but we have it in English. We have a special subjunctive in English. For example, in, in correct English, one would say, um, if I were rich, then I would buy a house. And that's our conditional for the would buy a house. Um, but if I were rich, that's an English subjunctive. So we, ha we do the same in Spanish. We have a special form that we use and we're, be we're going to be introducing you to that in the fifth module in November. And then finally, tricky Spanish. This is a very popular module um, where you are working through a whole range of uh, tricky aspects of Spanish. I'm thinking things like por and para, que and cual, and so on. Things that really lots of learners find tricky and that's why we've created a module especially for this. Now, this is a progressive course. So what comes up in module one will be will, will come up again naturally in the conversations of module two, three, four, five, and so on. And it's very important to look at the course as a whole because we're going to be working with you from July all the way through to December. Now, we're kind of at the halfway point of the year. Tomorrow is the, I can't believe that tomorrow is the last day of June and, and on Friday, the second half of the year starts. But just imagine how great you would feel if you got to New Year's Eve and you had completely skyrocketed your Spanish by then. So really do think about that one uh, and, and see what, what comes up. What I would also say is that throughout all these uh, modules, we're looking at authentic conversations, just like the one you heard tonight. So although we'll be focusing on tenses or the subjunctive or tricky verbs, lots of other things will come up naturally in those conversations and we'll help you with them. Again, we don't just give you the conversation and hope you understand it or provide a few bits of vocabulary. We will go through that conversation in the audio so you'll understand what's happened in the conversation and you'll be understanding other elements. So for example, you might find that in the module on false friends, we're also focusing on some pronouns and we can, we explain what to maybe is a, a, a definite, a, a, sorry, direct object pronoun and an indirect object pronoun and so on, things like that. So these will come up naturally in other modules. Okay, let's look at the schedule for the masterclass because this is um, the next part that I wanted to look at. I've just remembered I've got something else to show you. So we'll look at the schedule in just a moment. But for now, let's just have a quick look at this summary here. So six months, six modules. You might want to take a screen grab of this because it might be helpful when you're considering this um, after this event. So six modules in six months. 
You don't need to worry about what to learn next. We plan your learning for you. And that is all about progression and so on. Then we've got five audio lessons every month. And I'll explain more about that when I talk about the schedule. And you can take them whenever you want. So we make them available on certain days, but you can take them whenever you want. We provide lesson notes for each lesson and they build into a, a comprehensive course booklet. So you can refer to that as you move through the course. And uh, we also provide bonus resources. So every month we'll be providing bonus resources like checklists, video reviews, and also a test to help you check what you've learned. There are homework tasks. I can see Cindy is asking about um, what the homework is like. And uh, the, the homework is basically a, a homework task based on every lesson. So there's a short homework task that we'll set for you and you will contribute to that in our discussion area. And very importantly, with our VIP support, your homework will be corrected and your questions will be answered by our masterclass tutors. So this means that when you post your homework, uh, let's say we've been talking about the imperfect tense, we ask you to post two or three sentences, including some imperfect tenses. So you'll post yours, we'll provide you with feedback, and you'll also see the feedback that every other learner on the course gets. So it's the best of both worlds. You're getting your own feedback, but you're also learning from the other people in your class. Now, consider the, the situation where you're perhaps attending a, I don't know, a night class in Spanish. You'll submit your homework, you'll get your homework corrected, but you'll not see anyone else's because that's their private business in a sense. And with the masterclass, we're all learning together. So it's very important that everyone is part of that class and everyone can basically learn together and learn from everyone else's mistakes. And that's something that's happened in all the previous masterclasses that we've run. Um, we have now uh, done the masterclass, I think, about nine times. So over the past five or six years, we've run uh, nine sessions of the masterclass. And this is the same masterclass as we've run previously. We tweak it every time we, we do it and update things and so on. Um, but this is the same masterclass. So that is uh, many learners who have gone before you, they've completed this, they've done their homework and they've learned from everyone else's uh, homework. So I said I'd mentioned the schedule. So let's take a look at the schedule. The first lesson goes out on uh, Friday the 1st. So that's in two days time. The very first lesson of the masterclass will go out then. And then on Tuesday the 5th, lesson two will be published. And then lesson three on uh, Friday the 8th. So our first three lessons in the first sort of week of the masterclass, um, they'll go out. You can do them on those days, but equally you can do them other days. If you've not got time to do them those days, that doesn't matter. Um, they're not live lessons, they're pre-recorded and you can work through them at your leisure. And then on the 12th, the, the fourth element is an exercise, something to give you some practice on what you've been working on uh, in lessons one, two and three. We come back to the regular lessons on the 15th and the 19th. And you'll notice then that by the 19th, that is all the learning, in a sense, for the module. Because thereafter, we're focusing on review and consolidation. Let's consider what uh, the review and, and consolidation will help you do, because that's the second half of the month. And if it's the second half of the month, sorry, I'm just trying to find this button. Yeah, here I am. In the second half of the month, you can review what you've learned or perhaps if you've not managed to um, keep up with the lesson, uh, with the lessons every day because perhaps you've been on holiday or perhaps work is busy or you've got family commitments, then you've still got the second half of the month to catch up on those uh, lessons. There are some courses that provide content every single day. That's not what we're about. We are about helping you manage this learning and make it manageable for you in a coffee break each day or every couple of days, something like that. But you're still going to be doing really deep learning. And of course, because of all this progression and the fact that you're building on what has gone before, it's not random stuff that you're learning every day. This is all about progression. So that's the schedule of the masterclass and we have found that um, the, the students who have taken part in this over the years have always been able to catch up with things if they've been away or if they've been busy at work and so on. The target audience for the masterclass. I, I am aware that we're getting some questions and I will definitely answer all these questions, but I'm just, I've am just i got a two or three more slides to show you. So I'll, I'll do that um, and then I'll, I'll answer any questions that we've, uh, that we've got. And if you've got any further questions, please do post them um, in, in the chat. I'll, I'll get to them very soon. So the target audience for the masterclass, um, 
the target audience is intermediate learners. So if we look at the, the journey of learning, where it starts at A1, goes through A2, uh, upper beginners, then lower intermediate B1, upper intermediate B2, advanced C1, and then near native C2. We've not even put that on the on our roadmap here. Because the master class itself hovers around B1, B2. So in that respect, it's very similar to the level of our uh, season three course. And our season three course provides lots of content um, where you're following the soap opera, Verano Español, but you've also, also got lots of discussions between myself and Alva. But the thing about season three is it presents lots of interesting language, but there's not, in a sense, a structure to it. We talk about the future when we're talking about aspirations for the future. We talk about different elements in, in adjective agreements and things like that based on the topic that we happen to uh, be, be discussing on a particular day. So... If you are already working on season three of our course, um, and that's the, the Coffee Break Spanish podcasts and, and uh, courses, then the masterclass is perfect for you to help you consolidate what you're learning and really build a firm foundation on which to build further. If you've completed season two, again, the masterclass is perfect for you to help you build that foundation before you move on to season three. If you're already on season four, the chances are you may find the masterclass a little straightforward, a little not quite at the right level for you, because our season four course is firmly in B2 pushing into C1. So if you're already done, if you've already done that, probably the masterclass is not right for you. And this is another thing that I really think is very important. Again, there are other courses out there which will say, just buy this course, buy this course. We don't care what level you are. We just want you to buy this course. And that is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if this is right for you, then yes, it's the perfect course. It's been created with care. It's been created uh, in, in, in a very professional way. And it's a course that many learners before you have gone through. However, if you're not at the right level for this masterclass, then it will be available in the future. So don't feel that right now you've got to do this if you're just on season one, if you've just started learning Spanish. That's it's pointless because you'll not be at the right level and you'll not gain the most from it. So we're not trying to just get everybody to buy this course. That would defeat the purpose. We want the masterclass to suit you. And if it's right for you, then, of course, you are very, very welcome to be part of our class of July 2022. So the masterclass, as I said, between B1, B2 content and it is perfect for intermediate learners. If you've done season two or season three of our courses, then it will be perfect for you. Equally, if you are working on our magazine content or our travel diaries, that kind of intermediate level, that again will be um, spot on for the masterclass. So I hope that makes sense. Okay, coming back just to a couple more slides, a very important slide, pricing. So the masterclass involves a number of elements. Those elements are the five audio lessons per month, the bonus activities, the module test at the end, email check-ins where we send you an email every time a lesson goes out to remind you that it's there and with a link for the lesson. Guaranteed feedback that you'll get from our masterclass tutors if when you submit your homework and a course certificate. So the price for this in the UK would be £57.60 per month for the six months of the course. You just pay six installments, obviously or $59 in the US. Now, just to be clear, that £57.60 includes VAT. If you're in the UK, if you're in, in, in Europe, then you would pay uh, VAT at the local rate. The $59 does not include VAT, but there may be local taxes depending on where you are. Some states have digital taxes um, and you may pay those digital taxes. Crucially, when you go to our website, the price that is shown is calculated based on your location. So that is the exact price that you will pay uh, when you see that at checkout. So that's the basic price, £57.60 uh, monthly or $59 monthly. However, if you want, you can pay with a one-off payment. And by doing that, you save yourself one month. So by paying a one-off payment, you get one month free, and that would be £288 in the UK, again, including VAT, or $295 excluding VAT, again, with all the relevant taxes um, in, in, in wherever you are, in whichever state or, or location you are. Okay, that, I think, is... Uh, uh, the, the important information. A, a very crucial thing is that re registration is open until the 30th of June, mañana. Yes, registration will close tomorrow. 
Um, it's it's about ninety nine percent likely to close tomorrow. Um, if we fill the class before that point, then we will be uh, removing registration. If the cra the class reaches capacity before that point, then we'll be stopping registration. But it should stay open until tomorrow. It may even stay open until Friday, depending on numbers and so on. Um, but Friday is when it begins. Therefore, we will be uh, ready to uh, we'll be ready to start the lessons. So we don't want new people coming into that after that uh, after that time. So, questions. I know that we have had some questions, so I'm going to look through these questions just now and I will uh, address everything here. Bert saying, I suffer from some subjunct subjunctivitis here, really trying to grasp it. Bert will help you get that sorted out with the masterclass if you're interested. Um, so, Cindy's asking, uh, what are the, the how do, does the homework work? Um, so Cindy, I've, I've already explained that there's the homework is based on each lesson and we're inviting you to do some practicing of what you've learned. And by doing that practice, you'll be able to um, you, you'll be able to get your work corrected and uh, you'll also see the work of everyone else. Um, all right, Laurie is asking another very important question. How do I enroll? So let me just put the question over here. Actually, that's not going to work in just a moment. So I'll just put that here. But I will be bringing this. Uh, can I do that? Ah, no, I can't. Let me see if I come here. There we go. CoffeeBreakSpanishMasterclass.com. So head to CoffeeBreakSpanishMasterclass.com. I'll just put that up there so that it's it stays there while we're talking. CoffeeBreakSpanishMasterclass.com is where you go and you will, there's a page there with all the information, um, testimonials, explanations of uh, how the, the masterclass works and so on uh, with some examples and you can register from that page. Um, some other questions, Hennis, I hope I said that correctly. Can the modules be downloaded? Yes, you can download everything to uh, your own device. So uh, th these are audio files, they're MP3 files, the videos are MP4, the, pe the uh, lesson notes are PDFs. So you're able to download all of those to your own device. That could be a computer, it could be a tablet. For tablets, for example, for iPads, you may need to use uh, an app like Files, the Files app, that's the way in which you can store files on your device. Um, or you could use an app like Documents, but the, it's, it's all very straightforward. Um, so you should be able to download everything to your own device. Cindy's asking, ¿Cuántos estudiantes están en cada masterclass grupo? Mark, okay, so it, there tends to be roughly around about 100 students in the group. Um, there are, at the moment, we've got three different masterclass tutors helping with the masterclass. So we try to make sure that there are enough masterclass tutors to work with that number of students. So uh, that's likely to be the number um, in a particular group. Um, Paula saying, thank you, a little advance for me uh, at A2B1, perhaps when the course is offered another time. Thanks for the class, really enjoyed it. Okay, Paula, what I would suggest, if you are feeling that this is uh, a little bit too advanced for you just now, then it's maybe worth having a look at another uh, concept, another con another course, if you like. It's, yeah, it is a course um, that we have, and that's the Coffee Break Club. So if you go to coffeebreaklanguage.com slash club, that's a way of building your confidence in, in the language at an earlier level. So we have materials for beginners and lower intermediate learners in there um, in the Coffee Break Club. And those are weekly materials every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So you can have a look at the club and hopefully that will be of benefit to you, Paula. Okay, um, John saying muchas gracias. Thank you very much, good John. Um, Keith saying, what was the, was the level four course you mentioned earlier, please? So that would be Coffee Break Spanish season four. Um, if you head to coffeebreakacademy.com, you'll find Coffee Break Spanish season four there. And uh, that is based on uh, a story where we are um, following the adventures of a, a holiday on the island of Mallorca. Um, and uh, it's a great course. 
Um, Laurie is saying, sorry if you covered this, how is it downloaded through Facebook? No, it's downloaded. Basically, you access everything on Coffee Break Academy. Um, you can download everything to your own device. It's audio lessons, video lessons, um, and uh, text. So MP3 files, MP4 files, PDFs that you can download to your own computer or your own tablet and store them and you know, work on them. For example, if you're going on a flight or something like that, you can have everything downloaded and work on it as you go. So these lessons become a available on Fridays and Tuesdays over the course, as you saw, five lessons per month, and uh, you can access everything there as soon as it becomes available. Um, so there we go. Lauren's asking, are we able to communicate or ask questions with the instructors during the programme? Is there a way for students to interact as well? So good question, Lauren. First of all, yes, you're able to ask questions. We've got a special questions area for each module where you can ask any questions that you found challenging in any aspect of the course and our masterclass tutors will be able to answer you there. For student interaction, we that's not necessarily part of something of the masterclass itself. We don't provide that element. We do, however, normally each month we try to do some kind of live event um, where it's a, a case of, of something like this where you can ask questions live of, of myself and, and the, the other tutors. Um, so that is definitely something that we will be offering. Um, but that doesn't necessarily uh, have an opportunity within that for students to interact with each other. And we don't provide that in a, as an element within the masterclass because, first of all, we've got students all over the world and it's very difficult sometimes to identify times, uh, which will work for everyone. I know, for example, we've got people joining us from Australia today um, and it's first thing in the morning there, so we really appreciate that. Um, but with the masterclass, it's self-access, so you can access these materials as soon as they become available and do it whenever it suits you. However, of course, within the uh, homework section, if someone perhaps mentioned a particular thing, you're very welcome. Maybe they said they, they travelled to Chile last year and you've been to the same place in Chile. You're very welcome to leave a comment in Spanish, if you prefer, um, within the discussion. And it's very much an, an open uh, area like that where we would encourage uh, conversations. We would just not encourage one learner to give feedback on another learner's homework for obvious reasons. I'm sure that makes sense. Okay, the one final thing I would like to do is share some information from previous Masterclass students. As I said, we've had many learners, thousands of learners, go through the Masterclass um, over the past uh, six years. And uh, we have some of them, uh, we've made a video with some of them to tell you what they've enjoyed about the Masterclass. So if you are able to stick around, have a listen to uh, what they have to say. And... Uh, what I would say is that if you are considering this, then please do remember that the registration should close tomorrow and we will no longer be able to open it up and we will not be running another masterclass this year. So it is uh, the last chance, in a sense, to get on board with the masterclass. So let's have a listen to some of our former masterclass students. I enjoyed having a time frame in which I was responsible to myself to work through each lesson. Before, unless I was taking the class in person, I would seem to always find an excuse on why I didn't finish the chapter or didn't finish reading the book that I was reading. So by being part of this class, it kept me on task. I love being part of this group. It, it gave me a reason to, to log in and to see what the next assignment was, to listen to the next conversation. It helped me stay continuing on and not giving up. It was perfect for me, and I think it's going to be perfect for so many others. Thank you. I particularly love getting live feedback for the homework assignments, but I also love the specific subjects that you chose to focus on each month. They were perfect. For me, what I um, have enjoyed learning most of all is that I have a good ear for listening and the engaging audio uh, segments for each lesson have really, uh, I really enjoyed them. And they've really made me feel confident that I can understand what's said um, and the way it's broken down. I've learned more from them, um, but it's, it's really developed my confidence on that um, comprehension, which I appreciate. I appreciated that the dialogue was, was, was spoken twice. So first at a regular speed and then again at a, at a slower speed. As a beginner, that really helped me to understand. The course helped me to sort of pull it all together 
it was also a great refresher as I relearned, so to speak, things that I once learned but had forgotten. Um, perhaps best of all, I think I finally have a handle on the subjunctive. Mostly, I, I think there's been a lot of effort put into creating content that's challenging at this level. And I find there isn't much else available that I found um, that uh, is working for me. So thank you for putting that together. And I have filled my notebook with all sorts of tips and tricks and explanations that I picked up throughout the course that helped me to remember. And I will always be able to, to go back and, and review this material if needed. Um, getting feedback from the tutors on homework and answering the questions was great because sometimes I tried to make challenging sentences that I wasn't too sure about. And the tutors helped give me really helpful uh, feedback and helped me to understand. It's perfect for intermediate or advanced students. Um, it's really great that students can do the class at their own pace, but also get live feedback on homework assignments. That's just an amazingly good feature, I think, and I found it very helpful. I'd, I'd recommend the master class um, to people who were um, interested at the advanced level because there is um, not much engaging content, um, I find, for that level of learner. And um, because you've really spent the time to think about how to advance um, and how to make the content um, meet the needs of the uh, advanced level learner. I love that, especially with the master class, I have a dedicated schedule to follow. So it kind of forces me to sit down and do my homework. Um, but at the same time, I can do it at my own pace. So I don't have to be there at a certain time and be in class and be seated. So this has helped me tremendously because I'm, I'm more at my age of working at my own pace. I also like that the tests are self-graded so I can go back over them and retake them and look at what I did wrong and go over it again and again for now. And also in the future, I can redo it again. So I am, um, I, it's an enormous, enormous help for me since I have test anxiety. So it's nice of, to know that I can look at this many, many times over. So thank you. Yeah, I, I, this is perfect for me. And I think it's perfect for so many others as well. I really appreciated the structure of a, a regular monthly study plan that, that really helped me stay accountable to the course. Uh, I probably would not have made this much progress on my own. So thank you very much to all of our previous uh, masterclass uh, alumni who were willing to, to be filmed for that uh, video there. Hopefully that gives you a little feel for what the Coffee Break Spanish masterclass involves, for the opportunities that it would give you and the way in which you would be able to take your Spanish to the next level over the next six months. Six months is a long time. However, six months of... Uh, 15 minutes every couple of days is very doable. And what we pride ourselves on is the ability to organize the learning to help you make the most progress that you possibly can. And that's exactly what the masterclass does. We've created it deliberately for that very reason. So if you are interested in taking part, then visit the, the URL that I've, I've given there. So coffeebreakspanishmasterclass.com and you can find out more uh, there. And uh, we hope to see you in the masterclass. Thank you so much for joining me uh, for this session and for staying to the very end. If you're watching this on replay, then once again, uh, we are very, very, very pleased to have you here. It's fantastic to see some of you actually joining live because I can, I can see this. So thank you to Laurie. Thank you to Peter. And thank you to Adam, who have all joined during this session. Um, and if you are going on to, to sign up now, then we really look forward to welcoming you. Uh, in the masterclass. There's actually already people in the masterclass introducing themselves and we've been really enjoying it today, welcoming people uh, to the masterclass. So thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Um, I hope you feel as if you've learned something. Taking all of the masterclass stuff out of the equation just now, I hope you've learned something about the imperfect tense within this session. And that is very much a uh, an example of, of what you can be doing within our masterclass. Okay, um, so just there, there's a question coming in here from Denise. The alumni have mentioned advanced quite a bit. I definitely would not consider myself advanced. I'm working through season two as a refresher to things I've learned with a tutor and have forgotten. So if you see one of our, our alumni there mentioned, uh, Elaine, she was working through 
uh, season two as well. And she had felt a little bit wor worried about uh, taking on the masterclass, but she found that you know, the masterclass was exactly the structured approach that she needed to move on from beyond that intermediate level. Um, and you need to remember that these people are talking after they've done the masterclass. So they are feeling more confident. They've been working consistently at something and that's what it's about. Turning up, being consistent, doing a little bit of learning each day and making you transform your coffee breaks, your downtime into your do time. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much for watching tonight. Um, I wish you well with your Spanish, regardless of whether you take the masterclass or not. As I said, we want it to be right for you. And if it is right for you, we can't wait to start working with you over the next six months. Muchas gracias y hasta la próxima.